So let's keep going into um, further reaches of psi now that we're really using big omega. And uh, this is where psi really comes into its own. Uh, and we're going to put the focus back on g. Uh, not say anything about f in this video, maybe the next one either. Um, so we got to a point where we figured out the g value for psi of omega, and that was getting up to the triple up stage. And omega 2, we did an example of just going back, going a little bit beyond omega, it's triple up with a little bit of, of an increase, a significant but not dramatic increase in the, the sensitive input. Okay, now what about uh, going to omega 3, just still doing kind of small steps. Well, what's the deal there, right? Um, by definition, you just you start with psi of zero, you do you add that to omega two, and you put it in psi, and then you add that to omega two, and you put it in psi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You do that n times, and it's not too hard to believe if we just look at the pattern here. N plus one going to two n, we added an n minus one, and then we're actually going to add another n minus one, so we're going to get up to n triple up three n minus one. Um, and I'm not going to show you the, the inductive proof or whatever. Uh, you can put in the comments if you want to see more details on this. Uh, it's kind of cool, but a little intricate. Um, you can probably guess if that's a K, just a finite number, then what we're doing is we're t we're every time we go up, we're adding an N minus 1 to the sensitive index of the triple up. So it's going to be K times N minus 1 uh, plus a 2 to get, it, to get the starting values right. Um, so we're you know, we're, we're doing pretty decently. By G's standards, this is pretty good. And then, of course, one easy thing to do is put in the first limit ordinal here. By definition, if you've got a limit ordinal here, as long as it's a limit ordinal that uh, is of countable cofinality, something that actually has a fundamental sequence uh, leading up to it, well, omega certainly does. The fundamental sequence for that is just 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Then you, it's very easy to do that. So limit ordinals are the easy part. The successors, um, well, the interesting ones are the ones that don't have fundamental sequences. But limit ordinals um, of countable cofinality are pretty easy. And so we just put in an N, which is our usual diagonalization. This is a signal for very um, straightforward diagonalization. Okay, so this is about N triple up N squared. Hey, that's pretty decent. Okay, um, if we want to know, if you're curious about where we are in terms of the Veblen story, it turns out, and again, uh, if you put in the comments, maybe I'd say some stuff about more about how you know how we know these comparisons with the Veblen, and that would have to do with probably uh, we'd want to trot out the real definition of wait, what's the elegant definition of what these psi value ordinals actually are. Um, anyway, we're up to the second Veblen function evaluated it at the first infinite ordinal. Decent. I'd say we're in the heart of the Veblen idea, but we're certainly not getting going past it. This is just the second function. It's not a huge argument. Okay. Um, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is if I have a sense of what happens if I've got a psi and then uh, some expression involving omega and then some open slot, and I've got a sense of a, some sort of general formula, I, I, well, first I want to figure out the really general formula. I want to put an arbitrary countable ordinal into that slot where the omega is, and then that'll allow me to go to the next thing with the big omegas. Okay, so um, for any sort of reasonable alpha, um, anything less than psi of omega, so a pretty big countable ordinal, and that's as big as we really need here, um, it turns out that the generalization is really not just to go from k to n, it's really that what's going to go in that slot in general is exactly g of alpha comma n. Uh, and this is a really this is a really big deal, is that it relates g of a complicated gadget involving psi and alpha and omega um, to just plain g of alpha. And so this is this is the kind of rule that allows us to iterate, and we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so I've got the details in here, and this was the kind of thing where pretty soon, as soon as alpha is a decently big um, ordinal, like um, uh, like psi of zero, for example, uh, we're going to probably drop this this these details. Okay, so if you just want an example of that, if you have g of psi of big omega times omega doubled omega two, then well we know what g of omega two is; it's just two n. And so we've got an n triple up, something on the order of 2n squared now. So that's nice in general, but of course we want to go beyond as usual. Okay, the really, the first one we'd really be interested in, the countable ordinal we always want to put into these things to 
start the um, the really powerful recursive iteration part is putting putting in size zero. Okay, um, and then what's what's the rule there? If you want to expand it out just a little bit in terms of the ordinal, this is um, g of ooh, let's see, I forgot a psi there. Just kidding. There's a psi hiding in there. Okay, and then that's a psi hiding there. Okay. Um, remember that psi of zero unpacks to a tower of omegas, but really what we care about is how it interacts with this rule. We know that g of psi of zero, comma n, is just n double up n. So here's what this rule is going to tell us. It's that when we put a psi of zero into here, getting multiplied by big omega and then putting into psi, we get the n triple up, and then what's going in there is this n double up n. Now you might think that that, and so this is where I'm going to drop the details. Okay, so basically a triple up of a double up. Okay, that's kind of, again, the wrong order. If we had a double up of a triple up, we, it'd be bumping the triple up index up a little more. Um, but it's it's a little bit weird. Um, but uh, so we're, we're really going to just look at this approximation. If you look at G of psi of big omega times alpha, Evaluate it at n. It's n triple up, and then we're just going to drop all the complexity and say, hey, let's just put g of alpha in, that, in there. And that's really useful because we want to strip this down to the simplest idea as possible of some function we understand applied to g of alpha. That's always the idea for proceeding for, forward. Um, now, that's going to work as long as alpha is pretty decently big, and the only alphas we're really going to be putting in there are things that are at least as big as psi of zero, and that's certainly where this approximation is good. The n minus 1 and the 2 really don't matter. Okay, here's the next big step. Um, we want to put more omegas in here, so psi of omega squared. Okay, so let's just look at, uh, just briefly, at how the ordinal works. What's the rule? Psi of omega squared, the nth term of the fundamental sequence leading up to that. Well, first what you do is you write it, you write all the arithmetic with one, and sort of emphasize whatever is the last kind of least significant open slot where an omega is showing up. So I'm just rewriting omega squared as omega times omega. And so what I'm thinking of is, aha, the function here is omega times x. And so I'm going to iterate psi of omega times x. So here, let's bring it down here. So here, I'm going to define my h function in this case to be uh, omega times x. And by definition of how these fundamental sequences work in the uncountable case is you just iterate psi composed with h with a starting value that's nice and decently big, psi of zero. So in other words, you take psi of zero, you multiply it by omega, and you put it into psi. You multiply it by omega, put it into psi. Multiply omega, put it into psi. And then at the last, the last thing you do, of course, is a psi. So once again, we have this thing of a countable ordinal, then bump it up into the uncountables, then collapse it, then bump it up, then collapse, bump it up, collapse, bump it up, and then one last collapse. And you do that in times. Okay, so this is why it's really, really useful to have this kind of general formula, especially in as simple a manner as possible, because I am exactly doing psi of omega times countable a bunch of times, and I'd like to know if I know the g value for this guy, can I know the g value for this guy at, the fir at this first stage? And then can I know the g value when I've done one more psi of omega times, and another, and another, and another, okay? Um, so... We really want to know this, but we do. And we know uh, that when we start out, then we already have a pretty simple approximation. OK, so let's see how that works. OK, so g of psi composed with this h of omega, that's just another notation for g of psi of omega times a, a arbitrary countable alpha evaluated at n. And we've got this nice approximation. It's just triple up the g value you already were sitting on. Okay, so that's really cool. All we're going to do is we're going to start out with our initial value of g, which is n double up n, and then we're going to triple up that n times. Okay, so now with the triple ups getting into the story pretty seriously, the n double up n really doesn't do much. And so um, it's nice to know that that n double up n is big enough so that this approximation is not deceiving us, even at the very first stage. But you know what? Other than that, we're just going to ignore the fact that it's n double up n. And as a, a simplifying approximation, we're just going to say, hey, that's basically n triple up 
the n triple up function. Notice when we write it this way, this is this means the operation n triple up x done n times on this guy. So this is n triple up of, n triple up of, n triple up of. And if that's an n, well, you know what? That's the definition of quad up. Um, and there happen to be, there's n n's in the operators and one n over here. So it happens to be n quad up n plus one. Wouldn't be a, a tragedy if we approximated that as n, but we might as well. This is, this, is the, this is the new most sensitive slot, so we might as well be somewhat accurate there. So n quad up n, yay, we've reached quadruple up. Okay, so one thing to notice is that we've had some examples where we had like double ups and triple ups where the iteration or like the combination was not in the way, the right way, the, the powerful way that, is, that leads to the next stage. But here it was exactly in that, that way um, because what it was coming from is this powerful idea of the iteration that's attached to a new uncountable gadget of a slot for big omega and that meant whatever this function was this very rough approximation um, that acted on g that guy gets iterated n times and that's how you get to the next stage like quad up okay um, so that's what i'm saying here it's based on a rule of this form this is really really nice to have that um I have some one of these h functions that's based on whatever level of big omega arithmetic I'm looking at. Um, I'm interested in what's the g value when I do psi of h once, because I'm really interested in doing it many times. And if I can get it in this form, g of psi of h of alpha of n is some known function applied to the previous g value, then I'm just going to iterate, I'm going to be iterating k. And so what you want to look at when you do this carefully. Um, is looking out for those situations, and that's that's where nice things are going to happen, and where you're going to get a qualitative leap when you iterate. Okay, um, and of course, remember, g. We're mainly interested in g as a proxy for f. Anytime you go from, let's say, triple up, which is what we were talking about here, and triple up n, and triple up two n, and triple up n squared. Hey, that's great. Going up to quad up for g is just crazy increase in f. Absolutely crazy. So the absolute, just the initial expansion in F is now taking this many terms, and then every time you re-expand, you're doing that many terms with a huge, 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 huge N. It's just amazingly crazy how big this is going to be. Okay, so we could do the same uh, somewhat detailed story. For example, for start with psi of zero, and then add it to omega squared, and then psi it, and then add it to omega squared, and then psi. That would be the process for evaluating um, psi of omega squared plus omega, or we could look at how, how the g's work. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you the answers in a minute, but I just want to sort of give an idea. If we want, if we needed to do it carefully, and again, we I could show you a, a, more, a presentation of this that's a bit more detailed, but tries to do it in an efficient way. You could then also do things like, oh, what about omega squared plus omega plus a, an argument, and then put that, recycle that, omega squared plus omega plus the output of psi of that, et cetera, et cetera. That's going to converge to psi of omega squared plus omega 2. Um, or you could put this, the input in a multiplication slot again after the omega. That would go to psi of omega squared plus omega squared, which is better abbreviated as psi of omega squared 2. Okay. Um, notice that I'm not jumping directly to omega cubed. Because if you actually, if you want to do it carefully, you kind of have to go back and rebuild a little bit to be really sure of what's going on. Once you get omega squared 2, then you could get omega squared 3, omega squared k, omega squared alpha, then omega squared omega. Okay. Um, so let me give you the, the, the punchline, though, for some of these things, and then maybe cut off the video. Um, we've got g of psi of omega squared plus omega. Okay. We have this n quad up n plus 1. And then because we went back, instead of jumping up all the way to, oh, let's do omega cubed right away, or omega to the omega, or something like that, uh, if you go back to just addition, even though it's adding omega, we're still back to the main tool being at the double up level. Now, you're using that tool iteratively, and so you get n double up, the n double up function applied n minus one times, as it turns out. There's, a, there's an n minus one that shows up a lot that we've seen already. Um, applied to this big number. 
honestly, that's not a tremendous increase over the quad up in it itself, because we're only double upping it. Okay, but it's an engine that if you do it over and over again, and you and you do the alternation of iteration and and um, diagonalization, you really get somewhere. So, for example, omega omega squared plus omega two, not much more impressive. We're still doing addition as our primary engine, and that translates to double upping in terms of the G level, um, but we're just doing it basically twice as many times. Okay, so a pretty similar story, not a dramatic increase. Okay. Omega squared 2, the next one, well, that, it turns out, uh, finally, we're getting an increase in the sensitive input of the quad up. It's about n quad up 2n, not too shocking. Um, that this is, this is starting to say, hey, we're, we're almost, we're at the omega squared level anyway. We haven't transcended it. We haven't gotten to a new level of like omega cubed. Um, but we're doing that again, and it hopefully it makes sense that that would double the sensitive input but not change the level that we're at, okay? And now, omega cubed, once you understand omega squared times something arbitrary, like some arbitrary countable alpha, then you iterate that engine, and basically that says, okay, now we finally get to iterate quad ups, and guess what? That's how you create a, 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 a pentuple or a quintuple up, uh, n five arrows, and it turns out to be about n five, uh, five arrows n plus one. So there is a qualitative leap. Not too shocking that we had to do a little bit more significant algebra with the big omega to get up to a new level with, um, with the up arrows. Okay, we're going to keep going with that uh, in the next video.